Peter Piper picked the peck of pick peppers. Peter Piper picked the peck of pick. Peter Piper picked the peck of pickled peppers. That simple tongue twister from our youth, which I thought was sort of a childish exercise, uh, now it became a great challenge, and it still is. Hi, I'm Rick Palomino, and roughly 20 years ago, I suffered a debilitating stroke. Couldn't walk, right side totally paralyzed, couldn't talk, and I went from lecturing in a university lecture hall in Britain, for instance, sometimes 300 people, to a room where I couldn't open my mouth. Even saying yes to a question, simple question, simple to answer, like, would you like more pasta, Mr. Palomino? Was a delayed, uh, yeah, yes. And it was a tremendous effort after that delay to get it out. By the way, if you like this video or the series of videos, please smash the like button and hit the subscribe button. Um, I want to get enough subscribers going that it makes this effort look uh, worthwhile. I had lived and made a living according to my speech. I was a university professor, taught for years in different guises, high school, whatever. Um, I was a sales manager at a company. I was a export manager in France. I was a general manager in America of a company. Speech was the way, my, it was my currency and coin. <clears throat> the fluidity and flexibility with language was my hallmark. And I spoke, you know, reasonably fluent French. You have to, to work there. Um, I'm reasonably sort of fluent Italian. I could make myself known by speaking Spanish haltingly, but I still could speak it in German and even Latin. And uh, that's six counting English. One of the first exercises they spoke to me about, I was still in the hospital roughly a month after my stroke, was facial massage. In other words, this area was totally without feeling. So partially to bring the feeling back and then partially to bring the muscle tone back, you stimulate the area. So the massage, I did this as instructed. Two sets of 15 reps minimally in the morning and two sets 15 reps during the evening but I did it more than that because I was so determined to recover as soon as possible so basically uh, what it was it was massaging it in this direction for a few seconds massaging it in that direction for a few seconds and then pinch every few seconds and then repeat that 15 times and then doing a second set of 15. And that was minimally my first exercise in rehab. Okay, that was the first exercise. 
I learned. Then, in my, on my road to recovering my speech, I was incapable at first of talking in complete speaking in complete sentences. So therefore, putting subject with verb and direct object, I understood the concepts. But, you know, to process them all at, in an instant like I used to was very difficult. So I worked on doing that. Just give it to me. <laughs> or I want to go out. And to pronounce it clearly. Very, one thing that you know is that, or should know, is when you have a stroke, everything slowed down. So your processing speed slows down tremendously. So therefore, it takes a long time for the brain's processing power that's been suddenly maybe a million times less than it used to be to go back and get speed again. Okay, so roughly after two months, I could make my basic needs known. Now, the next thing is, I thought, hey, let me get the words out quicker than I'm doing. Because often I'm starting sentences and they've moved on, they get bored or whatever, and they move on without me totally saying what I need, and then suddenly they're delivering the wrong thing or um, giving me salt when I ask for sh sugar, I mean, whatever. Uh, get the words out more quickly is important than having a well thought out sentence. It's like when you speak a foreign language, a clerk in a store is not gonna wait for you to finish your uh, grammatically correct Italian or German or French, they're going to just take the next customer. So therefore, it's more important than you realize to speak quickly, more quickly than um, total grammatically correct. This time to correct your grammar, but when you first had the stroke, that's not the time. The people will lose patience with you. Fourth thing I uh, started to do was, I heard that this was good for stroke victims, singing. Now I'm I have a terrible voice. I maybe I have some kind of musical talent, but it's not in the voice. And uh, basically, apparently, singing is good for your breathing because after a stroke, your my breathing was totally screwed up. It's hard to combine the, after the stroke, the taking in a, of a breath with anything else, like an activity like speaking. <laughs> so therefore it, it's like retraining yourself. Um, <laughs> and then the third thing we did at, uh, now, now we're in, in actually rehab, and they took me and started to make me read passages for reading comprehension because the logic of a stroke victim is all screwed up. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a, I mean, just basic, read the passage and then answer questions to show you understood it. <laughs> And then, you know, you have to remember that, for me at least, speaking on the phone, it's the worst thing that could happen. Because at least when you're speaking in, in front of people, you can see them talk and try to guess what they're saying. But over the phone, you lose, you're totally lost. And one, one of those signposts of life is missing. Um, okay. The, the, and the, let me mention again, the tongue twisters. I studied those. I had sheets of papers. 
Um, and by the way, that's one of the things you have to realize. Suddenly you have these simple tongue twisters, collections of poems, and they're all given to you as a stroke victim. These might be things you studied when you were seven years old, and suddenly it's, it's, it's thrown back at you, at you as something to learn. Uh, it's, it's funny in a, in a sense, and in a sense it was not funny, but you have to take it as funny because otherwise your desperation will, will get the better of, it, of you. Um, but anyway, I had these sheets with drawings of tongue twisters and, you know, with turkeys and uh, Peter Piper and whatever. And it's <laughs> like, a, like a third grade person's uh, homework. Word recall and uh, spelling and Scrabble is a great game for that. My daughter, my oldest daughter, had the idea of trying to challenge me to a game of Scrabble. And every day, religiously, we played one, two games. And that was very important for my uh, diction, for my vocabulary. Um, and then it gave me a chance to pronounce the words in my mind, um, as I put the letters down to enunciate them properly. But anyway, that was a great, um, great tool. Well, after three months, I started speech therapy at what Roger Williams Hospital, not at the hospital itself, an outpatient situation. At first, uh, at home, and then after two months, I think, uh, at a facility and that was specialized in that kind of thing, um, they worked on my putting together complete sentences, as I said, enunciation, speaking out loud in the volume of the speech. Um, you know, and there were, they also had tons of tongue, tongue twisters and, and many, many exercises that were very helpful. So if you get an ability to get that kind of therapy, I would take it. In fact, I read reasonably well after a few months there such that they asked me to speak in front of the group and groups just to give an example of you know hope to people that were still unable to speak i was determined i would get better i as i said i that massage routine i didn't do it twice a day I did it. If I did it less than 20, I would be surprised. I was in a hospital. I was in a bed. There was nothing more to do anyway. I refused to watch the average TV. So I, I, I just was determined to get better. I didn't stop with what they assigned me. I searched for materials beyond the materials they gave me. The old joke, you know, the old joke about a, uh, a um, young man arrives in front of, looking for Con Carnegie Hall on a street corner of New York, and he says to uh, uh, someone, "How do you, how do you get to Carnegie Hall, Mister?" and the guy says, practice, practice, practice. And that's really what it, the, uh, the therapy amounts to, just practice, whether it's the physical part or the 
mental. It's not a fun way to improve your speech, for instance. But there's nothing better than constant, unrelenting practice. I'll go now, and I want to thank you for your attention. And don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell, and like.